Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number seven of my Lazio Football Manager 2016 Let's Play. In this episode, the three games we are going to play to finish off October is going to be away from home against Fiorentina, three days later after that at home against Roma. So two pretty big teams in the first two, and then another three days later against Chievo. So big games. A big games, Kievo still away from home. Uh, they're 14th in the league, but in a short space of time, like about yeah, three games in a week, is going to be tough regardless of who you're playing against. You're still playing against competitive teams. So hopefully, I know, like hope, can, can we win three games again? I don't think that would happen. Uh, we would have to be really, really good, rotate well also. Uh, I would like to remain undefeated like continue this period of being unbeaten. Uh, that will be ideal. But our first game is against Fiorentina, and that is away from home. The biggest game of the episode is first up. It's fourth versus fifth, and both teams want to be winning because want to get into the top three. Torino's doing really, really well. You would expect they would drop down, though, but yeah, you can only see how they're going for the season, I, and that's what I do want to do right now. I want to see how they're going for the season, but first up, check their expectations. Media prediction is 10th, so about mid-table team, and oh, they got Ciro Immobile. I think he's a fantastic striker, but he's only scored two goals in eight. I'm very intrigued to see who's been uh, doing uh, well for them in terms of scoring goals. I may have to go back to the general info view or selection info uh, to see, yeah, the average ratings. Uh, see, But uh, there's one standout, uh, Bruno Perez. And, yeah, because uh, that Basali has only played one game and one off the bench. Uh, also, defender uh, Maximovic. I've heard of him before. Yeah, Nikola Maximovic. Yeah, he's actually yeah decent. He's probably one that would back up that. We'll get him on the short list. We'll get another scout board as well. But yeah, uh, Nacho as a centre back, right back, and even right wing back. He's pretty good. He's 23 years old, so he can only get better as well. So, yeah, pretty good. How about Bruno Perez? He's a Brazilian, uh, isn't he? Yeah, right back, 25. He's not too bad because he's really quick, but to me, yeah, 11 tackling and 11 marking is not very good. I think he'll be very good going forward, though. So, yeah, they're doing well uh, so far in the season. That's the only way you can judge it. I suppose, so we'll head straight into the team selection, and I noticed quite a few of you guys are saying I should start uh, Divock Origi, uh, no doubt we got him on loan, I didn't intend to sign him on loan as a starting player, that's why he actually hasn't played yet for us, he's played in like the under 20s, he's played European Championship qualifying, he's killing it in that, and he's improving, so no doubt Liverpool should be thankful, uh, like even he's playing no games, but he's still developing really well, but I don't think anyone in the right mind would drop out Alessandro Matri. Funnily enough, he's a player on loan as well, but it's the form. I don't think any manager in the world, like in real life, would drop a player with this kind of form. To me, that would be unrealistic. And yeah, you shouldn't like play personal favourites. He scored like a goal in the last four games and he's got a hat-trick there as well in that period. He's, well, he's only played two games, uh, competitive games. There's other preseason ones we won't count. Uh, that one against Genoa and then another against Inter. So Inter, a pretty good side. Rest of the games he's scored in. So to me, that's pretty impressive uh, that he's able to do that. And you can't see a viable reason to drop someone like that as much as you could like another player like Origi. I actually really like him. I, I didn't put a sign, uh, like a fee to sign him, unfortunately, uh, in his contract. Uh, yeah, we can't sign him. Well, we can sign him, but there's no yeah future fee specifically there as well. But it, I could see him being as a type we need, but I want to sign an Italian, like a homegrown player potentially as another striker. Um, no doubt we would have to sign another striker with two of our strikers for this season being on loan and another one, Miroslav Klose, being old and probably won't renew his contract for the upcoming season. Yeah, 26 or the, yeah, the following season, even though he's this good. But yeah, it's hard to say with his age. Who knows? Maybe he'll retire as well. So there's all these yeah, other potential things that you could leave your feedback on as well. But... I'm going to leave the team as is. A couple rotations here and there. Mar Marco Parolo is back in. Uh, I did start a Nazi previously. Uh, but we need to continue winning these important games. So let's head straight into it. 
Okay, so early highlight here, you can see Fiorentina is actually having a lot of possession. So I'm feeling, yeah, they could counter here and have an opportunity. Uh, they've got some good players, big names, Blazikowski there. Uh, but Lulic, uh, coming in left back today, uh, made a good challenge. And we actually could have this opportunity. Parolo can drive a Buster whip in that cross like you do. Parolo. And I'm happy we score there <laughs> from one chance. Yeah, pretty happy with that early in the game and only 38 uh, percents of possession, uh, pretty effective there. So Fiorentina, yeah, they didn't create the opportunity. And that was only a half chance as well. So pretty happy uh, that we did actually score from that. We'll see the replay here, obviously utilizing uh, the fullbacks getting forward. Uh, Buster, look at that. Perfect for Parolo. Nice little finish. And Parolo's been a guy I should probably talk about just a little bit more. Look at his average rating. We'll see in the Champions League, what, 7.7, .7, excellent. But in the Serie A, he's played seven times, started seven times. Two goals, two assists, one player of the match, and he just scored another goal here. He's improving in his attributes, his experience. He's 30 years old. He's an interesting one. Like, he could have still a few years in him. And But again, one of those older players that are improving. But the rating, 8.01. To me, for a central midfielder, that's unheard of, especially a central midfielder that doesn't pick up a lot of assists and, like, so many goals. But, well, he's got three goals already in the season. Maybe could... Okay, we got to be careful. It's a corner. It's Valero. We could get rid of this. Tino Costa. It's Teo. Teo. Mati Fernandez. Oh, wait. We'll see what happens here. Of course, they'll score. Uh, but does anyone uh, remember Matty Fernandez? Uh, more specifically, I think in older football manager games, he was known as Matias Fernandez. Uh, but he was a beast back in those days, like FM08. Oh, he was because he was younger and he was a superstar. He, yeah, I, I remember signing him like for my Manchester United saves and whatever saves I would do when I was a big team uh, back in that game, FM08. And even FM09, he would have yeah, held similar potential and everything like that. But unfortunately, yeah, we do concede. So again, we'll take a look at Matty Fernandez. And to me, that just sounds wrong. I know him as Matthias Fernandez <laughs> so many times, like I said. Uh, it was the Football Manager 2008 game, the first Football Manager game I played uh, in length. Uh, the one before that, FM07, I didn't play as much. I got it, but then I soon got FM08. Uh, there's no wondering why he was really good and had amazing potential because the like the couple uh, years before, I think, yeah, that, that season there, his second season with Villarreal would have been uh, that, yeah, FM08 season. But a couple of seasons before, like he got 29 goals <laughs> for Colo Colo. So obviously he was known as a hot prospect. That's ridiculous though, 29 goals. And he was still a youngster playing games. So yeah, there's no surprising, yeah, he was a good player and that he's developed into a good player in real life as well. He doesn't go too bad. But back into the action now. we got to focus on the game, obviously, because they have another opportunity. Lulic clears it, but straight to Blazikowski. Oh, Keita won that back. That's really well done for a small type of winger uh, kind of player. Really impressed with that. Now, Parolo on the ball. You know how good he's been. Kondreva in board to Bilia. Bilia, Maori. Oh, give it away, but one it back here. Kondreva. Maori goes bang, and I've been told I should offer him a new contract <laughs> by you guys. You seem to really rate how he's going despite his age, and yeah, I, I didn't have any intention of letting him go. That's the thing. He's been absolutely amazing so far, and just the whole team really is making me want to enjoy this. Like, after I finish recording this episode, I just want to record the next episode. That's why I wanted to go back to doing this kind of series, because if that was the case, just watch the finish here first. Maori, yeah, excellent. I wanted that save where I would absolutely love recording. Just, uh, yeah, record everything I do for the most part, like every single game. And, yeah, maybe I could get a lot of videos out in this series if that's the case, where I could just record all day. Well, most of the day anyway, because look at this. He does it again. That's his third, or that's our third. Sorry, getting a bit excited. <laughs> that's his second and his seventh of the season. Really? Wow, that's really good. Nice header. Nice header. What? A, I just, I still wish he was younger though. When I say I wish he was younger, it doesn't mean I plan to let him go. I just want to have him for longer. It will be so disappointing when we will have to let him go because you will just want a season like this all the time. And the thing is, just get a replacement. You could say that. But he's so unique. Look at those mentals. Those are sick. 
you might think his technicals, there's none that are 16 or higher, but he's still got vision, 17, still pretty creative. But the thing is, that's separating him, or that would separate him from others, I talked about it already, like the heading, 15, jumping, 13, strength, 14. He's just unique in that way, in terms of his physical ability in the air and scoring goals uh, with his head. He's just... Oh, I just wish I could uncover another player <laughs> like him. That would be absolutely amazing. I'm thinking Marco Parolo. He could be a similar type if we mold him into attacking midfielder. What do you think about that? But for me, his tackling ability, yeah, he just suits that central midfield position. But yeah, that a guy like Maori, you just want forever. You just want that player forever in your team, and you want him to be part of your Champions League winning squad. So if we, but what, but what, <laughs> there's no reason we can't do it this year. Yeah, well, why not? Why not? Another cross could be coming in, but we give it away, and they could actually hit us on the counter. It's Teo, and it's Babacar. Gentiletti, oh, he does well, but they have an opportunity here. Matty Fernandez. Matty Fernandez is on form here today. That's his third goal of the season. Again, what a crazy half this has been, and with the way we're playing as well, um, obviously, it's attacking formation. Uh, obviously, I don't like conceding goals, but it's probably exciting for you guys. Like You see goals all the time. It doesn't make it boring. That is for sure, as we are going to head into half time now. Hopefully, don't concede another goal. We'll take a lead. Again, not impressed with conceding. Um, you could say play more defensive, but as I just mentioned, this is so attractive, the way we are playing. And obviously, defense will improve as we yeah, get better. Uh, in terms of our players. We've got to guard against complacency, though. We've got to focus more in that way, and it looks like every single player has either gained focus or seemed motivated, so that should go down well, I would hope, anyway. So, guys, I'm noting that we have got a few yellow cards in this game, and Lukas Bilia, I want to show you him. Like this, so this is why I started making Football Manager videos, and I'm talking a lot in this video about so many different things, so it's probably going to be a longer episode, but if you're enjoying them long, yeah, just leave your feedback. Like, I love showing things about my players. That's why I started, why I created my YouTube channel in the first place with Football Manager. I just wanted to show my team and everything like that. Uh, major interest from my, yeah clubs, Arsenal is big stuff. That's why I probably get comments sometimes. People like, talk and play the game. But that is, to me, that is playing the game, Football Manager. It's not just about actually playing the this part here, the match day. It's about everything. So regardless of what you're doing in Football Manager, you're still playing it because you're the manager. Everything you're doing is important. It's not about, not about just the match. So yeah, I can understand why people say that sometimes. But yeah, understand it's Football Manager, not FIFA. So, again, we'll bring on closer. Actually, undo last. We're going to try and bring on Divock Origi for Matri. Hasn't had the best game. So, there has been a few like that. doesn't mean Matri's crap because <laughs> he scored so many goals. But Origi will change his role. Oh, complete forward. He's actually That could be intriguing. I've been training him as a poacher, actually. But looks like complete forward could be the best go for him. So, we may do that. And Lukas Bilia as well on a yellow card. And we shall bring on Danilo Cataldi. So, I see Danilo Cataldi. He isn't doing so well in training right now, but I could see him as a type like Parolo in the future because he's 21 and should still improve. Still got that potential ability to grow into. So, yeah, he could be a similar player. Uh, so, that could be good <laughs> for him. But we shall make those changes. And, yeah, I hope we can hold on to the result. But at the same time, I'm looking for another goal. Obviously, yeah, bring on players that could do that, whether it be creating or scoring. Origi, see, that's the thing. If he scores and if he impresses here, that could yeah, open the door for him to start more and maybe me actually be interested in signing him in the future. Okay, they've got a corner. It's Fernandez, but Kendreva clears as well. Come on, win this. Okay, it was, <laughs> it was too close to their player, but now it's Teo and now it's Valero. Come on, Keita. He's been actually good defensively, Keita. Impressed with that. Origi now. Can he impress me? He finds Parolo. Parolo, Maori. Ma oh, Kondreva, put the ball in. No. Basta. Ba <laughs> it's not quite happening here. Gentiletti. We still have an opportunity, though. Whoa, they've got a number 72. Wow, that's a high number. <laughs> Come on. Origi sets up for Parolo. Should have scored. And it would have been 4-2. So, 20 minutes remaining, it may be wise now to try and actually hold on to the result. So, Maori, well, he's been excellent, 100%, but I want him to take part in the next game. So, we're actually going to bring on 
Ojini Onazi. And we'll put a third central midfielder. Hopefully, yeah, try and control the midfield. Uh, playing box to box. Uh, Parolo can, is already you know, great in that role, 100%, but we can change him to deep playing playmaker and just, again, put that support. So playing with two deep playing uh, playmakers either side of the box-to-box -box midfielder, I think that can work out well. And if we go to instructions, uh, higher tempo, let's try and lower the tempo here and go shorter passing and retain possession. Just try and uh, keep the possession a bit more and we shall see how that goes. And it does actually look like that we are playing out the game now, holding on to the points. It's just been a different contrast. First half, so many goals, and the second half, we've been able to defend fairly strongly, which is a good thing. You don't really see too much of defending, but yeah, if you just don't see highlights, it's a good thing, and they spray that. He tried the shot there, I think. Not sure what it was, <laughs> really. But we do end up holding on to the 3-2, really impressive. Second half, yeah, you might say a bit of a letdown, but also, when you're not conceding, that's not a bad thing. So I count that as, yeah, good, a good defensive performance in the second half. So very well done. There's not too many higher ratings. There's just a few players that perform really well. Parolo, Maori, Superstar, Kondreva. He was the player of the match. He just is so good. He goes all day. He got the assist, or he got both assists, obviously. He just... His quality, is just I have so much praise for multiple plays. He played 10 key passes. Amazing. So I guess he would have deserved the player of the match, but Maori may be a little bit disappointed. And we are only three points away from Juventus now, but they do have their game to play, and it's hard to expect them to lose. Maybe draw. They've had one draw this season, but they're going win to win the majority of games. So we've got to focus on ourselves for the most part. So it's time for the next game now. Lazio v Roma, uh, big rivals, local rivals. So uh, this will be a big, important game. We'll go to the club just so you know who's the rivals, which games are going to be big. There's Roma, local rivals, and Juventus competitive, and Napoli competitive as well. Livorno historic. So a few rivals in there, especially, yeah, Roma, yeah, Napoli, Juventus. Those are going to be big games, obviously. So we'll head into the match preview and can we win another game <laughs> it's crazy how many games we've won like um, obviously tactically things are going right for the most part defensively I'm still a bit worried but the amount of goals we're scoring that's really really positive so you don't want to take that away especially if you're winning games and not really losing too many um, that is something you got to take out of it so yeah, team selection uh, we've made a couple changes. Uh, Divock Origi is actually going to start now. Um, Alessandro Matri, his morale dropped, maybe because I subbed him off, and yeah, he wasn't happy with that reason. I, I don't really know why, 100%. But Danilo Cotoldi also will come in, box-to-box -box midfield that role. Stefan Radu back at left-back, and Patrick at right-back. Dusan Basta, he's suspended just from yeah picking up multiple yellow cards, uh, five yellow cards, so... Yeah, just banned for the one match. And Stefano Mauri, not going to drop him out. We don't have many other contenders for attacking midfield. So he's got that role pretty much all to himself. And he's got good natural fitness. So like 16, so he's a pretty fit player. Obviously, 35 years old. He's still playing at a high quality. He makes himself available for a lot of games. But look at his last three games. Sure, he's got five goals in the last three, amazing, but he's got that exactly nine rating each time in the past three games. It's interesting. He had that batch earlier in the season, but those were from some friendlies as well. There was one against Manchester United, but yeah, that Hercules uh, scored a goal. But then there was a really big batch where he didn't score goals, but he was still playing fairly well, like creating goals and everything like that. He's had a good season assist-wise. Uh, you can see he's had... what. Well, well, two in the league, okay, that's not, it's it's not so many assists, but that's because we're spreading the load as well, but his creative play throughout the game is very impressive, what I can see, and from his stats also, so, oh, huge game though, Roma, we're playing at home, this will be a huge win for the fans especially, but also in the context of the season, let's head on into it. So actually, I've been waiting for a highlight so I can kind of introduce this game starting, but there hasn't been one. It's been a very quiet half. A bit disappointing, 
uh, it was always going to be a tough game against Roma, but it's been a very defensive one. Both teams have only had one shot on targets and not too much to get excited about. And Patrick here picks up a yellow card. And not, yeah, like I said, yeah, not too much to get excited about. So let's go assertively and say I'm far from pleased with what I saw from this team. Like, what the hell was that? <laughs> and they agree. They certainly agree. Every single player is fired up. You know, there must be something going on. When every single player gets the same reaction, they all kind of know we need to do better in the second half. So come on, show it. If you're fired up, show it on the pitch. Let's create some quality opportunities and score a goal. So here, early in the second half, it's a bit funny. There's a highlight early in the second half, and there wasn't one in the first half. But now Francesco Totti, Al Sharawi, of course, on loan, and he completely uh, wasted that. Okay, another opportunity here. Rugani plays it to Kendreva. Oh, we give the ball away needlessly there. Castan, he puts it forward now. Francesco Totti, can he create something for Roma? Uh, just a couple of wasted opportunities. Maybe they're trying. Like they've tried four long shots because nothing is really happening for them. Oh, and Contraver's had a bad game. Oh, 6.3. That's unheard of for him. So we'll bring on Andrea Zivkovic, the youngster we signed. He can spark something most definitely. Maori is close to being sub, but really the only other attacking midfielder we have, and uh, that's Ravel Morrison, who hasn't really played so far this season. He's got to be a bit of potential in him. Like... He could be the one to take over uh, from him. Obviously, English. It's it, it feels good to have an English player. And Ravel Morrison, uh, I think he's a talented player. So that dribbling and flair, obviously, he's got talent. He just needs to work hard for it. Teamwork eight is not ideal. Like You can tell the kind of player he is like that. But he's technically gifted. He's, he's a special player. So hopefully can get the best out of him. He's 22, so obviously still can improve uh, with that potential. Uh, but yeah, he's the other tagging midfielder we really have in the team. And he's a player that could provide that spark, really, that we could need in games. It'll be interesting to see how he develops, though. Maybe when he turns, like, 24, 25, if we do still have him. Yeah, what will he be looking like? Will he be a key player for the team? So, guys, I think this game is really calling for some changes from ourselves. And the thing is, uh, we are playing how I would if I was looking for a goal, if that makes sense. But I think we need to just go attacking pretty much instruction-wise. I think that's why we were scoring a lot of goals. But this might be, <laughs> if we don't score a goal, it could be the first time uh, in this save. But, yeah, it's how I would be playing if I'm looking for a goal, but playing on standard to be slightly more defensive. So maybe change up the crosses as well. We'll whip in the crosses, see how that goes. And yes, we'll take off be more disciplined also. Uh, and we'll, oh, I'm not sure about, yeah, clicking on be more expressive, just not clicking on either, either of them. And, and probably we'll make a player change as well. I'm thinking if we'll make both subs, Al Sharawi is coming off for them, so that's good news because he's very, very dangerous. I think we're going to have to take off uh, Stefano Maori, though, and we're going to bring on Ravel Morrison. It's your chance, kid. Step up. Step up. And who could be the next change? That's the question. Who could be? I'm Usually, I look like to the players who's starting the game to look for a sub, but here I'm looking for a player on the bench who could win it for us. A uh, mix of both, anyway. It's hard to say. Divock Origi, I'm thinking Divock Origi. See, he hasn't really shown up. And we're going to bring on Alessandro Matri. And we'll just change his role, of course, to advance forward. He scored goals this season. Uh, and the advance, or the inside forwards, I should say, we'll put them on attack. And we'll see if that provides uh, a bit more. And actually... We'll look... Yeah, we're ready. Again, we're already looking for the overlap, like I said, with the instructions. It's kind of how I would want it if I want to score. But, yeah, change to attacking now. Ravel Morrison, he seemed deep in thought. And Matri, come on, you have ability to make a difference. Nah, just deep in thought. But he has showed this season he can score, and he's done it as a sub before as well so far this season. Okay, there's a highlight here. Kata, and I did make a couple of other instructional changes but they have the opportunity. Oh, it's Falca here. It's going to be for them. 
we just have to try and defend it. Patrick, oh my god, that was so close to giving away a penalty, but they're going to score anyway, so I don't know why I sounded relieved. <laughs> the opportunity was still alive. And of course, always, <laughs> if there's a crossing opportunity there, it's always an opportunity uh, for the chance to still be alive. So let's see. But it's nothing new. Like, I'm trying to analyze the goal. But yeah, it's nothing new. But yeah, no one's marking him. But obviously, that what happens when I go for it a bit more. So this is going to be... Well, it's looking like a disappointing loss. Come on, overload. Like before I said, I made some changes. I go route one. I've kind of made all changes I could. So, oh, it's annoying. Take more risks as well. Let's see what happens. Okay, they've got a corner here. They're going to score from it. Kata, come on. There's still hope for us. Come on. Matri. Sivkovic. Kata's in space. It's Ravel Morrison. Find Zivkovic, and that was a great opportunity. Like, I feel... Oh, I don't feel either team deserves to win here. So, if we do go down, I think it'll be a bit disappointing. Because both teams didn't really show anything. Didn't really show much for the whole game. It's a tough loss to take. Because we've had other games where we've, like, conceded more chances. <laughs> it's really weird feeling. And they're going to finish? No, they're not. But that is probably going to be the highlight there. So, yeah, we're just waiting for the game to end, unfortunately. Florenzi, come on, take the corner. How long? Come on, there has to be a lot of time wasting. Come on. Seriously. Look how much seconds he's calling off, these Italian cheaters. Fuck. So, yes. And yes, I'm still mad uh, that Italy dived in the World Cup against Australia years ago. <laughs> oh, no. Come on. Losing 1-0, pretty disappointed there. So we're just going to say, aggressively, you were not good enough at the end of the day. Uh, that's the truth. But I feel, yeah, I d both teams didn't deserve to win that. But hey, we're still on top of Roma. Three positions... Three positions on top of them. And we're in a good position. We're still in a good position. And maybe we're due to lose as well. So, guys, time to get into the final game now. Third and final game. It is against Kievo, And they've done pretty well. They've moved up to eighth now. They were about 14th or something when I started this episode. So, they're on form. And they're playing at home. So, this isn't going to be an easy game. And we still... Like, this season... Like, I think we've been amazing. I think I'm getting the best out of my team, and I'm not even in a Champions League position. That's what I mean, how hard this is going to be. In the Serie A, you've got Juve. Obviously, they're always going to be doing well. Maybe in future seasons, they could drop down a little bit, but they're still going to be in contention for the top three. Then you've got Inter, Fiorentina, Roma, Milan not doing their best, and even Napoli, you would expect they would do better. They'll get their act together and yeah, maybe some make some new signings or something. It's always going to be a tough battle for that top three position. So yeah, we're going to have to fight for the rest of the season, most definitely, if we want to stay in the Champions League. It's a long season though. And then you always have maybe that other team that surprises you, which is Torino for this season. Uh, Guerreri ineligible. So we'll take him off there. Uh, Patrick will just make right back, I think. Georgievich is not really getting a look in because I want to uh, put basically Divock Origi because he's being requested to play. And a lot of you guys don't seem to really care about Georgievich, <laughs> to be honest. But I can see why because Origi, he likes, he's, he's at an English team like Liverpool. You can see why his young player with potential. Yeah, definitely makes sense. But for today, we're going to be starting Miroslav closer. And there's no reason why I shouldn't be. Because in the league, he scored four in three starts. Two off the bench appearances. In that one Champions League game, he scored and assisted. So he's another one like Maori who's very experienced but can still perform at a higher level. Maybe they can combine today. Uh, Philippe Anderson also gets a start and a few other players just rotating like Bisovac uh, because Rugani needs a rest. He's 85% condition, been playing so many games in a row. Uh, he's proving to be a pretty good signing, isn't he? If you're wondering... Uh, yeah, about our transfers that we did make if you're new to the series. But I suggest if you're new to the series, you should watch from the start. Uh, I just think that's better instead of reminding people all the time. But yeah, Stefan de Vrij moved to Manchester United for $36 million to not play Champions League. And yeah, Rugani signed for us, obviously, for $28.5 million, cheaper than we sold de Vrij for. So I was happy with that because, of course, we did beat Manchester United in that Champions League qualifier 
Champions League qualifier to be in the group stages. So yeah, he went to play um, Europa League football actually. So yeah, good luck to <laughs> good luck to him. They're always in a lot of my series. There will be that kind of story, maybe with a player and or a team or something like that. I think with my Manchester United save last year was with Arsenal. Yeah, it was just like a bit of banter kind of between that. So sometimes I have that in my saves as well. But yeah, let's just get straight into the game. Okay, here we go. Early opportunity. Philippe Anderson finds Parolo here. Goes out wide to Lulic. Can he get the cross in? Dangerous cross. Close up. Maori scores another goal. And they do actually combine here. <laughs> Closer and Maori. So we'll take, uh, take a look at the replay here. I think Closer did actually get the header there. And we'll see more closely on 3D. Uh, Lulic, he's always very dangerous. Uh, fullbacks or wingbacks getting forward. Very, yeah, Closer got that little touch. And Maori... He just puts home another goal. It's almost like another striker. Okay, it's a corner. Can Draver, can he create something here? Parolo's going to hunt after that. And he finds Bilia. Could he finish? Bilia, no, it's tackled. Can Draver, we've still got the ball here. Bilia, out wide to Parolo now. Parolo, Philippe Anderson. Okay, out wide to Lulic. Good cross again, dangerous. It's going to go back to him. And he wins the ball. It's good possession here. We're... We're holding on to it. Oh, Frey. Oh, they could actually be the one. They're going to be on. They are. This has to be it for them. No way they score. Okay. That is a surprise. We had the dominating attack a few times, and then they countered. That's obviously something that's where we're going to concede uh, often because we get a lot of players forward, everything like that. And, yeah, they j just hit you quickly. But the thing, we probably should have scored. We should have scored, really, and, yeah, that attack, yeah, wouldn't have been anything. Okay, we have a free kick. Can Draver... Oh, Bisovac! How did you miss it? I know you're a defender, but you almost shouldn't be able to miss from there. It shouldn't be possible, but I guess it is. Come on, I give you opportunity, and you just stuff up. Yeah, come on. The... I'm I'm a bit disappointed. I'm a bit... And for someone that wants to play more, yeah, you're not showing it. We'll go aggressively. I'm far from pleased with what I saw from the team. And Maori a bit disappointed. I'll just say... Well, I'm very happy with your performance. He's still got a 7 rating. Yeah, he looks happy and no one else got disappointed. That's perfect. So, uh, we're going to go attacking for the second half. We need to be doing much better, even though we are playing a team that's really on form right now. We'll take off, be more disciplined, and we'll actually, yeah, be more expressive. And I changed crosses to float because that will probably suit closer a bit more. And, yeah, uh, we'll stick with that. But we've got to be chasing, yeah, we've got to be chasing a win here. Let's make a change. Someone who's been not very good today is Dusan Basti. He picks up a lot of cards as well, doesn't he? Let's like for like Patrick. Patrick has never disappointed me so far this season. Uh, Philippe Anderson. He's just not... I'm taking... I don't care if they're fits. Like, they're just not playing. Philippe Anderson off. And we're going to bring on uh, Balde Keita. We need better players, pretty much. Players that will get the job done. Okay, the chance is still alive. Patrick... Got to be smart here, Keita. Maori scores again. Ninth goal of the season and 50th goal for Lazio. The way he's playing, to me, he seems like an up-and-coming player who's got years left in him. That's how he's playing, honestly. It's amazing. Totally did not expect this output from him. When I started this save, I thought he may be a guy who would play. He started, obviously, as a best center attacking midfield for us. So we would use him, but I thought he would just, yeah, show signs of depleting as a footballer. But he's not. Obviously, he's going to go down physically. But to me, his technicals and mentals have only been... I wouldn't say going up. They haven't actually gone up, but the arrows are green. So, yeah, the, it's better. Yeah, it's better than I expected. Um, have to say that at least. Gentiletti, again, uh, doing pretty well. Lucas Bilia. Stefano Maur, it's... I have to leave him on, surely. We'll take off Lucas Bilia and we'll bring on Onazi. Can we play Onazi as more defensive midfield? Or we'll play it with two box-to-box -box midfielders. We'll roll with that. And we'll see how we go. And actually, wait. 
I'm going to push the inside forwards back to support because we've got the lead now. We've got the lead, and yeah, let's revert to our normal setup. We'll go to standard, and yeah, I think uh, that should be all right. And yeah, we'll go back to low, or not go back. We'll revert to. Um, we start with these settings we had already, but yeah, we'll retain possession a bit more, lower tempo. Just yeah, um, hopefully that will be good, and play out of defense as well. Just try and maintain possession a bit more, not exactly to waste time, but to not really allow them many more opportunities, if anything. And also, it will take off pass into space. You just want to be passing to feet, everything like that, uh, with keeping possession, of course. And, yeah, I'm pretty confident in those changes. Onazi, I have faith in you. And he looks happy. Should be enough to play our last 20 minutes. And, yeah, we could still score another goal, of course. Oh, there's a late highlight here. Just about six or so minutes remaining. I would hate to concede... But I would love to score and kill the game off. It's Kater. He's dribbling past. Oh, yes. That's perfect. That is perfect. They get a red card, which means there probably won't be a goal from this highlight. And there's a very good chance they won't score a goal. Ken Draver. Could he prove me wrong? <laughs> nah. Well, there's some space. There is some space. But, yeah, they won't score. <laughs> the highlight was the red card. That's it. That's it, boys. So heading into injury time now, doesn't look to be any late opportunities. Five seconds left. The referee is about to blow his whistle. And there it is. Maori has been sensational today. And not just today, in recent games. His goal-scoring form is actually ridiculous in the last few games. Just whew, amazing. I'll show you that after we continue, uh, after we leave the match here. As we move up into third, but all the other teams have to play their game and see where we would end up after that. See, there it is. Maori impresses for Lazio, 35-year-old veteran midfielder. Again, look at that. Six goals in the league from attacking midfielder. That is 35 years old. Just look at that goal-scoring form. Whew. Look at those braces. <laughs> Three in the last four games. Oh, That's just amazing to think of that. But... That's it for this episode. So we'll go to the fixtures to see the results to remind you. 3-2 away from home against Fiorentina. Roma, unfortunately, we, that was yeah, that was a bit of a weird game. Unfortunately, it was a tough one. Uh, not too many chances both teams, but Roma, they yeah, snuck out that goal. Oh, it was Florenzi, yeah, Florenzi, that cunt who was wasting the time from the corner. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, 2 1 against Kievo uh, was good to get a victory after losing, and we're in third position. Pretty solid, but again, other teams have to play. But that is going to be it for now. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet, as well, to be reminded when I upload my videos, as I do make consistent daily football manager, but also FIFA content as well. There's also that for you just always yeah content coming and it will always be that way as well i'll always be uploading content mostly daily there might be some days where i might be busy or whatever but for the most part yeah i'm going to be uploading videos uh, for the foreseeable future anyway so that's it for now and i'll see you guys in the very next video